This episode brought to you by the sheer force of will. This is Hot Drop, where we bring you premier PUBG analysis and hot drops. I'm Dano. And I'm Cody. And let's get into it. All right. Episode 36, Dano. Episode 36. I bless the metal rains down on there and gill. I thought I'd try my hand at singing. For some reason, I, like... I went southern on that. I, I don't really know why. <laughs> <laughs> I'll roll with it. Down on Aaron Gale. Speaking of southern, that's kind of southern, right? Desert? <laughs> I, I would assume Is that a transition? So. I, I just try to really hard to get some really smooth transitions. I feel like it was a reach, but it works. Okay. Yeah, I, mean, I think we might have ruined it by calling it out, but... Uh, yeah. Miramar's, Miramar's coming live to on Xbox. Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> uh i'm so glad too it's been far far too long for you xbox guys right now go there download it it's open right now do it uh, you might hate it i don't know <laughs> a lot of people uh have some discontent about this map it but is however, something new it is however on the test server to be clear it is not on the live servers you have test. to download the test server game um it's still very exciting for you guys to hop in there and see what aaron gel is all about um Picado's crazy. Hacienda's crazier. It's a fun time. Yeah. Those are going to be hot drops, by the way, for you guys who don't know. Picado, Hacienda, uh, San Martin, Los Leones, or Los Leoneoneones, as we prefer to call it. Yeah. If you want safe drops with a lot of loot, Campo Militar, uh, usually you'll have a good uh, early game fight. Um, a lot of loot up there. Um, and also Cobra Library, La Cobraria. Um, is also a good place to drop in, get a couple early game kills, and find some good loot. Not a literal translation, by the way. There's nope. no library whatsoever. Uh, and also, if you want to go ultra cold, go for those two little islands at the far east. You will regret it. Nobody goes there. There's <laughs> nothing there. So we want your guys' feedback about Xbox uh, and about Miramar, so jump into our Discord. I think we might need to explain Discord a little bit for those who are new to it. So what yeah. is Discord at the high level? Cody, can you explain to the folks listening, what is Discord? Yeah, so Discord essentially is an online chat community where there are voice channels that you can hang out and play in. Uh, it's a better in-game uh, chat. Uh, there are also a lot of text channels, just like a normal chat room where we talk about uh, anything and everything. We also have uh, updates pages. We have drop and self promo pages where you can uh, boast your own uh, Twitch or YouTube streaming channels. We have um, our question of the week in there. So it's essentially just a big community where you all can come and hang out. We have a lot of active users. Uh, we'll sort you by uh, whether or not you play Xbox or PC. So it's easier for you to find people to play with. So come on down, hop into our Discord Hot Drop podcast. Um, it's, it's really fun. Yeah, we have a link in every show note for the Discord. And uh, as soon as you pop in, just say, hey, give us a quick greeting. Tell us about yourself. We're in there all day long talking, so it's a it's a great spot. It's the best spot to connect with us if you guys have any feedback or just want to meet us and hang out and play games. Word. So moving on to PC. We've got a really big announcement this week about um, they're going to balance the weapon systems. And whether or not they gave us a lot of information on that, that just strikes up a conversation in itself. Um they want to balance out weapons so that people stop using ARs and drop all SMGs essentially right off the bat. They want to either nerf or boost or do whatever to these guns so that people will feel that they can use any gun in any situation, it seems. Um, but they were also pretty vague about what that meant at the moment. Yeah. They haven't given us any numbers yet. They say that's coming in future updates and future blog posts. Uh, they say that just like Cody said, only a few types of weapons are used in most situations. And so they want it to be more based on personal preference rather than uh, which gun is the strongest. And we've seen, Cody, what's the number one weapon in this game that everyone goes for every single time? I want to play with the M4? Every time. Always the M4. So It's the, it's the most versatile AR that you can find. Is. You can use it short range, mid range, long range if you can't find a sniper rifle. It's ultra powerful. 
it's the fastest firing rate i'm pretty sure uh, maybe the so. scar is a little faster but uh the scar doesn't seem to pack as much of a punch and you can't use attack stock yep it takes every single attachment slot it's the best weapon and so what they're trying to do is make it not the best weapon or make it so that there are other alternatives to the m4 which might be just as good or mm -hmm. maybe not quite as good on the surface but weapons that you can get better at and become very proficient with and possibly have a leg up on other players depending on uh, your skills with those other weapons so just kind of leveling the playing field a little bit i think this is a really cool change yeah i would agree with you um and alongside that they want to change the attachments as well so that the attachments are either more versatile or will help a specific weapon out more in order to balance everything out mm -hmm. yeah we're gonna get into a talk in a second but i wanted to point out the extended quick draw which is something john brought up it's something that you always will grab there is always that is the best attachment there's no other alternative to that so it would be really sweet if they could come up with some other ones that might give you more options um thinking yeah, like well, what if you had a magazine that had another one duct taped to it that you could just pop in, pop out, flip over, and pop it back in? So, like, it almost gives you a 60-round mag instead of a 40-round mag. Yeah, that'd be pretty awesome. Like, some, some crazy attachments they can come up with. I've got some ideas like bipods that you could deploy on walls, um, grenade launchers for custom games we've talked about, laser sights, night vision, if they want to get into some crazy custom modes. There's a lot of ways they can go with this. Yeah, there's there's a ton of different uh, combinations of things that they can do to make me want to pick up an SMG over an AR if uh, if I wanted to, which at the moment I don't. Yep. And finally, they have some changes to the level three helmet. It is a game changing item that can impact the outcome of a match. They say that it gives you an extra life in situations where a headshot would otherwise kill you. And they don't want luck alone to determine who gets items like this. So for right now, uh, not yet, but soon, they're going to remove it from the normal loot spawn tables and limit to care package only. So they're testing all of these things on the test server first. And this is the first time they've ever attempted a balanced change like this. So it's going to be some time before you see it on live. And so what we'd like to do now is bring in Lemon John and talk about this topic in detail so that you can get the perspective of most of the hot droppers, Sans, Zach Barr, and the ever absent Ricklemania. R.I.P. The thing I wanted to talk about essentially was they, they've told us that they're going to make the level three helmet a crate spawn only or a crate drop only. Um, and that you can no longer find it as a normal spawn. And I think that I disagree with it. Uh, I had a lot of time to think where I thought, well, this will be interesting to see. But I think right off the bat, um, eliminating it completely from an in-world spawn makes it less... You can't anticipate as much when you're going into loot up. And that's kind of what discourages me from wanting to get on board with it. Being able to level three the hell out of yourself in the world, like spawning... Um, is really fun but if you know you're not going to get a a level three helmet unless you go for a drop i think yeah. that it stops you from being able to choose how you want to play the game because it kind of forces you to go for drops um to be the most protected that you can be counterpoint john go just real quick uh you, there is an achievement in game to get completely level three 10 games in a row and it'll make this real difficult to do <laughs> bum, bum, bo, dum, 10 bum, games in a row <laughs> no 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 not in a row sorry 10 games total so like you have to do it 10 times level three vest level three backpack level three helmet yeah they just wingered that one hope you got so that, that already because you can't now <laughs> <laughs> i i don't think this is a bad change i think that getting a level three helmet is such an advantage over a level one helmet that it belongs in a crate. I think that the strength of the item is equivalent to the crate drop weapons, so it should be with the uh, crate drops. So would you agree with the same thing with level three vest? Um, I No, not necessarily, because it the, the percentage... So if you take a level three or a level two helmet and a car 98 shot, if you do 
two shots or let's let's just take an AR M4, right? Mm -hmm. I believe it's two shots with a level two helmet um, with, let's say, an M4 at a reasonable distance. You hit them twice in the head, they're dead. Okay. With a level three helmet, it should be three, right? Should be. It depends on distance, like you said. No, but just assuming that assuming, yeah. you're within the max damage range, but what, or it's level or it's three. Yeah, it should always so be one more than the level two takes. I agree. Right. Yep. So it's increasing it by, in that case, one half, right? Mm -hmm. Um. So you you take you have to take one half of the damage again to die from that. Level three vest. It takes four shots in the chest without a vest. With a level three vest, it takes five. I think so. Maybe it's six. Uh, I'm with a scar, sure. uh, you will deal 46.13 damage to a level three helmet, and you will deal 18.45 damage to a body shot uh, against a level three. So 18, what's that? Do some quick math. It's almost 20, so it's like six shots to kill someone with that. It is, so yeah, six, six shots, shots. Six shots instead of five is only increasing it by one fifth, right? Science. Something like that. So the, the <clears throat> percentage of the DPS output is so much more reduced by the level three helmet than it is by the level three vest. Um, again, and the things where this is most, like where it affects the most, are sniper rifles. Getting two shots on somebody, like with a level three helmet, it's not an impossible task. It's just a little bit harder. You can get a shot out in the head and then try and burn them down with your AR, but just being able to take somebody out uh, who's not necessarily paying attention, who stood still for a second and is out of position, basically with a car 98 or a even more powerful sniper rifle, I think is a good thing. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I agree with you hundred percent. I just, I don't want to agree with you because of your smug attitude and your ponytail <laughs> in the game, sir, but I will, because that was a great point. John has I a put lot that of those. ponytail in savage too, just to make you mad. Just swinging in the breeze, taunting you with every sway. That's right. Yeah, no, Wait. I agree with this level three change. I think it's a temporary. They did announce that that it they're reworking it, so it's sort of like put it aside, put it in the penalty box, <laughs> uh, give it some time out to think about what it is. Well, um, I'm curious what the weapon changes will be yeah. in conjunction with what they do with the level three, because this could all be moot in the next few weeks or whenever they release the weapon changes. Yeah. And and what could what have they analyzed? Like what data have they looked at that tells them we need to change the numbers? Because what, what it I, doesn't really feel I, like they need changing to me right now. What do you guys think? Um, so based on the wording, according to our research, only a few specific types of weapons (ARs) are used in most situations. That makes me think that based on our play uh, and. Uh, my play with some other squads is that the M4 is going to get a hit. Mm -hmm. I think it's an all-around great rifle. It's not just like well balanced, but it's best in like best in show in most places. Um, so I think that will get some tuning to try and make it more of a an option to go with rather than just the the one to go with and i think the ak will get a major buff to to counteract that because it's just pretty difficult to use right now i think it'll i think the recoil will be decreased and i think maybe the bullet speed will go up because mm. i think it deserves a faster bullet speed than it has uh, if we're trying to get realism here uh bullets travel way faster <laughs> in real life than they do coming out of an ak in this yeah. game so I think those are two changes that I would expect to see there. Well, <clears throat> with the Cart 98 and the level three helmet change, those are going to be buffed accordingly. If it's going to be a spawn or a drop crate only, it's going to be buffed or debuffed somehow. 
yeah it depends on how they want to change the the gameplay like yeah. if they want you to f to force you to go for those crate weapons to make them that more valuable they will get rid of that one shot kill with the car 98 to the level two helmet they will buff that or nerf that or they'll just spawn it less or they'll yeah or they'll spawn it less or they'll do something else that will make it not as good as it is now yeah um, like it, yeah, decrease they, fire rate or decrease damage or make it so yeah. you run slower or something like that i can't imagine that they're going to be able to do a whole lot with the smgs to make them more powerful accurate to help in anything under a close range fight what i think they can do is again hinted or mentioned uh, attachments yeah so I, I i don't think they will uh, i mean I, again i don't know but i don't think they will mess a lot with the core functionality of the smgs i think they were they will perform roughly the same but the attachments might give them a boost in some areas that we're not used to so would they take attachments away from the ars different attachments or would they just get different ones for these smgs like a laser sight <laughs> so they they say specifically the goal here is to provide you with a wider array of attachment options so you can choose one that best fits your combat situation rather than any one best attachment and the first thing that jumps out to me is the extended quick draw mag like that's clearly always the best so they might have that be more of a like middle of the road and they might have the extended mag maybe have 45 shots or something or maybe it sticks at 40 extended quick draw might have 35 shots regular mag with 30 but the quick draw will be like super quick to reload and then extended quick draw will just be a little bit faster than normal so they might they might switch some of the what we think of as the best attachments currently and they might add some new ones mm -hmm. i could see that happening yeah, yeah. One thing I just thought of slightly off topic of attachments is what the end goal of this, of all of these changes will be. So if you think about uh, pros, for example, you, you have the ability now, depending on the way they go with this. So say they, they take all of these weapons and they all make them good in some situations and, and not as good in others. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have a wide array of weapons to choose from. It sort of uh, raises the skill ceiling slightly because you can become very proficient in the M4 but suck with the M16. Or you can be yeah. an excellent SMG player but terrible with the shotgun. So it's yeah. sort of depending. It makes them more situational, and it kind of opens up some new doors to how you play the game. Uh, if you want to perfect an SMG, for example, you have the option to take that route, and it's going to be just as good as an AR might be in the hands of someone who's very skilled with it. Does that make sense? Yeah. I think you'll yeah. you'll open up the 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 skill gap a little bit, or change the change how the skills are sort of distributed, and it will give you a chance to showcase your skills with a certain weapon that you choose to use, rather than what the meta is now, which is everyone takes the M4 because there is no weapon that comes close to contesting that one. Besides the scar, it's it's pretty close, but it's the what as people have decided as the the champion of the ARs, and yeah, and there's no other situation where you'd want to take a different weapon if you're a pro and you're very good. So I think that's maybe this is catering to the pro scene more than the the us plebs. What do they say? Mm. What do yeah. the kids say now? Yeah, I don't know. Do people still say noobs? I, I feel like they they don't really anymore. Actually, I think they ban you if you say that now. Yeah, I think that's a bannable offense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, real quick, I wanted to t jump off that point that you were making, Dano, and just like the 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 ability to have like a specialty, I think it's going to be really strong, and I really hope that they can like diversify it enough. I, I'm thinking of like the Counter Strike updates where they were using, um, you know the data from everybody playing to try and figure out how to buff the guns that weren't ever being bought. There wasn't a, ever a good reason to buy, yeah. you know, certain SMGs or the R8 uh, and then the yeah. 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 So there's, I think that it, while it might, this is really good news for the pro scene, hopefully 
I think it's also really good news for the casual scene. I think we'll see people feeling less pigeonholed and less, you know, feeling like they have to be a great, um, you know, a rifle user or sniper user because in previously they were just so good. Um, maybe we'll see people, as you said, being able to run other things. So I, I, I don't think it'll just be a pro scene buff. I think it'll be a widespread, like a lot of people will have a gun that they can fall in love with. Mm -hmm. You're so smart, John. Well, it's, I'm hoping that this is the case. And I'm hoping that I don't have to eat my words later. <laughs> and this has been John saying that he's going to eat his shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think one of the things that we're forgetting about or one of the things that people don't realize are the weapon multipliers. So, mm. like, we've been talking about how, like, oh, a weapon does whatever damage to a, a level 3 vest. Mm. Um, if you look at the weapon class damage charts... Mm -hmm. uh, if you remember, the submachine guns do 100% damage to the chest, but 120% damage to the legs. So they're doing <laughs> so more. Weird. I know, it's so weird, but they're doing more than just like changing the attachments. I bet they're going to change these numbers too. Because mm -hmm. I, I see the point of bringing up the machine guns uh, damage output to the legs, because mm -hmm. I think you're supposed to use these when you're running and you're less accurate. So it's mm -hmm. supposed to kind of reward you a little more. Um uh, for moving using them how quote you're intended to use smgs which is more of a run and gun versus a sit and plank kind of thing mm -hmm. <laughs> sit and plank sit and plank yeah um but yeah they're gonna adjust these these things too the rifles do 230 percent damage to the head but 100 percent to the chest and 90 mm -hmm. to the legs mm -hmm. um pistols do 200 to the head so you get double damage to a headshot but 100 everywhere else and they're also doing this, if we want to go another layer deep, they're bringing in bullet penetration through limbs. So the oh, bullet's yeah. going to slow down as it hits the arm. It's going to do some damage there and then maybe do less damage when it hits the chest. We're adding in more calculations, first the arm hit and then the chest hit. Mm -hmm. So I think all of these things together is going to make for a very different, different experience, I guess, a different way to play the game. Uh, yeah. more options to choose because I'm betting like for example shotguns probably not going to penetrate that much so if you hit the arm with the shotgun you're not going to be nearly as doing as much damage as you would if you were slightly more accurate but mm -hmm. then you factor yeah. in the server lag and desync and like <laughs> that it's going to be a lot of stuff to to go through and change and update and make sure it's working right yeah but there's there's a lot to the damage calculations that we've sort of touched on in the past but mm -hmm. they're I think they're going to adjust this too while they're already looking at attachments and already looking at uh, every other aspect of the weapon. Yeah. We might be playing a totally different game in like three months. Yeah, that's true. I would be okay with that. The more change, the better, as long as it doesn't lose its integrity for what it's supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. Because the changes bring people back. They 100% bring people back and get excited to play again. Mm -hmm. Like you'll see massive spikes every single time. When Miramar came out, huge increase in players. Because uh, everyone got sick of Erangel and was like, eh, I don't really feel like playing that right now because I'll move on to this new game. Mm -hmm. But everyone that I've seen play this game, like I've never heard of anyone say that they don't like the core mechanics of this game. It's exciting. It's fun. Uh, it tests your skills. And when they add these changes, it's going to bring back the people that might have fallen off the wagon. Mm -hmm. Yep. I like it. Cool, cool. Cool, cool. Yeah, lots in store. Lots in store. Neato. So this is Dan making a great point. <laughs> and I'm Cody. <laughs> and I'm Lemon John. And I'm here too. And, and I'm still Dan. Cody. <laughs> All right. Uh, so now uh, let's talk about the event mode from last week, Metal Rain. Um, this was an eight man squad with flare guns and I thought it was pretty awesome. It also had dynamic weather. Uh, so throughout the game, eight people at a time, uh, for eight man teams, there were flare guns that would spawn, not in the same, uh, buildings that happened last time. Cause that was only on Miramar. Uh, this was all on Erangel and the weather would change as you play. And I thought it was a blast. 
It was a blast. I didn't actually find any flare guns myself, so that kind of sucked. But the flare guns had a little extra twist on them, which was if you shot the flare outside of the play zone, you got dropped an armored UAZ, which is pretty baller, actually. <laughs> it's it was sick. It was awesome. We never really took a lot of damage on it, so I can't tell you how well it worked being quote unquote armored. It really just had some metal bars around the windows. Um, but it was fun. It seemed a little heftier. Um, it did. ticked gas down pretty fast. However, um, it did seem fairly safe. Like I said, we didn't really take any any fire. Uh, we kind of destroyed during that game, so that was cool. Yeah. But but it was really fun. I think the chatter got a little bit too much with eight people uh, playing something other than war mode because war mode, the 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 play area was smaller, so you didn't have to communicate the way that you would have to in a a full out match. Um, in Metal Rain, however, everybody was trying to say what they needed, what they got, where they saw contact, what direction we wanted to head into, and so it took a little bit of getting used to to figure out who was talking to who, and people just reverted back to using the numbers associated with your tag instead of using your your tag name, your gamer tag. Yeah, because it opened up a lot more slots for people to play with you. Uh, we didn't recognize people's names so much, so we almost had an easier time just calling out, hey, number six, hey, number three, like, I need this from you, or come get this, or whatever. It was much easier, easier than remembering their full gamer tag or trying to connect a voice with a tag. Yeah. Um, quickly, back to the UAZ, I wanted to mention the two negatives about it. The first one was it was horrible to see out of in first-person mode. It was, it was very really difficult bad. to drive, especially going up and down hills. Uh, but the other thing, which is a stupid thing, but I had to say it, they were modeled seats in the back behind the second row. So, like, you have the first row of seats where the driver is, and in the back you can have two people there. And then in the way back, there were two seats on either side above the wheel wells, and they modeled them, but you couldn't actually sit in them, which I, I thought for sure that this was going to spawn this truck and allow us to take six people, but we couldn't, which kind of sucked. But that would yeah. be cool going forward if you could have one vehicle for six people. That would be pretty sick. That would have been pretty awesome, yeah. But yeah, anyway, I would agree with what you said about the hecticness of the calls. Like You had to rethink how you called out and how you communicated. It was less of like, hey, there's this over here. It was more like, hey, guys, I need this, so if you see it, tell me. Yeah. That was the kind of communication that was much more effective, we found. Yep. And I would say that it, there was no discussion at all about who would get the care package. Mm -hmm. When you had the flare, people just assumed that you got the care package, which I thought was actually very cool. Yeah. Um, everybody just kind of left it alone. Um, and whoever shot it off just went for it when it landed. Yep. So, yeah, so we didn't... Did you fire off a flare gun? I didn't get a chance I did. to. I fired off two, yeah. Nice. Yep. Yeah, it gave it a new dynamic with the dropping of the UAZ because you had the option of, okay, I've got no car, but I've got a flare gun, and I'm very far away from the circle, but suddenly I've got a car. So it was kind of a cool thing. You could save it and move into the circle and fire it off and then get a regular care package, or you could use it to your advantage to get a vehicle. So it was a different twist on an old game mode. Uh, I like this one more than the Miramar one, I think. What did you think? Yeah, I think this one was much more enjoyable uh miramar becomes frustrating uh when you try to make it in event mode because it's a harder map to play in general mm -hmm. um so this kept me coming back every time and i kind of wish it had stayed longer more than two days yeah yeah i definitely agree there erangel is much more fun for me i i'll i'll be completely honest i prefer that map um so well, to that's... have every map be every every game be on that map without having to back out and switch was nice and that's, I mean, moving on to our next point, that is a thing that's coming. Map selection is coming. They announced it this week. Um, soon enough, you will be able to select and deselect any of the maps that you want to play. Uh, and then if you have more than one selected, it will be random. So if you want to only play Erangel, unselect Savage when it's available and Miramar, and it will only send you to Erangel. If you want to play between Miramar and Erangel, unselect Savage, and it will randomly select Miramar and Erangel for you. Mm -hmm. And I think that's fantastic. We've been waiting for that. It's going to solve the problem of people backing out of matches. You know that you're going to be able to find 100 people that want to play in, in Miramar. Oh, um, yeah. Every game. So you don't have to worry about it. If you want to play Miramar, don't worry about not being able to have a full lobby because you will mm -hmm. uh instead of watching it tick down from 88 to 42 
Yeah. And then dropping into a game that big without having any fun. Yeah. I'm very much looking forward to this because there are some times I do want to play Miramar. And now we can select that. We can say, this game, let's go for Miramar. And then other nights we might never play it. And then other nights we might only play Savage once it finally comes out. So now we yeah. have that option. It's it's really nice. I'm really glad they added this. Everyone has been asking. All of the Steam chat comments, add map select, have yep. now been answered. Their prayers have been and, answered. And and now it gives them more versatility because they have been kicking out more content. They've been kicking out all this stuff. Why not give us the the most popular request since everyone finally stop saying region block china on the, <laughs> yeah. the community page and such an easy request too like how hard could this possibly been to implement yeah you know i wanted i wanted i think that they they did not want to give up so easily on something they'd worked so hard on mm -hmm. because people don't like to oh, play yeah. Mirror as much i think that's incredibly evident to everybody but um they wanted to make sure that they could keep that in there uh, because they do say, and I do believe them, that different regions do play different maps um, more often than others. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they didn't want to have to get rid of Miramar because they didn't think that all of North America wasn't going to play it. Um, and so giving everyone the option to choose, they're going to fill every map every time. Yeah. Just like you said there, that's something they looked into. They used the data that they gathered. And they didn't want to have matches where you just go in and there's no one there. Uh, everyone is always backing out, so... This is the solution. Hopefully, um, we'll see this pretty soon. They don't have a timeline for it right now, uh, but they say that it is, it's coming soon, and it's almost complete, and they, of course, will implement it first on the test server before pushing it to live. Right. And so the biggest news that came out of PUBG in the last 19 hours is that PUBG is holding their first global invitational this summer for a game that is still unfinished, uh, people complain about the bugs and the updates. Uh, they are holding a professional invitational this July. So <laughs> eSports ready confirmed. I think we can finally say because the prize pool is $2 million in prizes. $2 million. <laughs> That's great. I don't even know what to say. Um, and so this is a this is a twenty team bracket here, yeah. for two million dollars in Berlin. That's cool. Yeah, this is global for real. This is three seeds from Europe, three from North America, three from Asia, two from CIS, two from Korea, two from China, two from Japan, uh, one from South America slash Latin America, and one from Oceania, and then finally one from the Middle East slash North Africa. So they have literally all over the world people coming in to compete for their region which is cool because usually it's just competing for your your sponsor yeah and i i think that being able to do this is going to um be something that a lot of us end up watching when i didn't actually think i would watch competitive PUBG ever i would agree i didn't really catch the gamescom uh invitational that was a, a episode that i did it feels like six months ago at this point and the game was in a pretty rough spot back then. Uh, you guys can go back and watch that episode. I had a lot of thoughts on that. And it was mostly because of the bugs, first off. But second, because they hadn't really figured out how to observe it. Um, they hadn't really figured out how to position the cameras correctly so that you caught the action when it was developing. Uh, there were so many times when the casters would build up a certain fight. They would say, oh, look at this guy. He's coming in really close to this other team. Uh, he's got the jump on him. He's about to take him out. And then all of a sudden, the camera would cut to someone running in the middle of a field completely alone, and you would miss all the action that they just spent you know, a minute building up towards. So hopefully they get that figured out, because that was the biggest obstacle for me uh, to be able to watch this and have a good time. So I, I hope that they iron that out because it's difficult. With 100 people in a match, to be able to know and spectate and watch everything that's going on at once and be able to catch all the action is pretty much impossible. It, that's I hard. Wonder, I wonder if commenta uh, like the commentators are going to be representing specific teams and that you as a viewer will just have to choose to uh, watch that team. That's possible. Yeah, that's a good way to go yeah. about it. Because like, separating it like this essentially is like if I want to watch the Asian teams in the final round – um, 
that is who I will watch. I won't know what's going on. And it will just be like you're watching a Twitch stream, which people love. Not knowing what's coming, I think, is better in PUBG than knowing exactly what's happening and having that God mode view. Mm -hmm. That's a really good point because a lot of people prefer that God mode view and they want to see the storylines, right? Like you want to go into people's inventory and say, okay, this guy, he's right on the edge of the blue. He's only got a painkiller and five bandages and he's looking to be in a lot of trouble. Like that kind of information you can get as that God view spectator, but you don't right. necessarily have that if you're only following one team. So that's that's a really interesting point because like I think I would probably prefer to to watch it with knowing everything that's going on, but it's impossible to catch all the action still. So yeah, I don't and, know, it's give and take. The way that the end game moves, nobody's going to really be able to pick up on that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that middle game is the, definitely the most boring part when you're watching it in a professional situation because right. everyone's camping out and and just holding their ground pretty much yeah so it i mean it'll be interesting to see i'm actually very excited for this i think that um it's a step in the the direction that player unknown wants to go he wants it to be a competitive game and that's his one of his long-term things is a sustainable um esport um are they gonna sign writers saying that they know that the game is buggy and they can't complain <laughs> yeah hopefully yeah yeah, um, picture that. You're in a top 10 situation, and l what happened to us? We got stuck between a railing and a wall. I was right. trying to jump I mean, over you, and we just got stuck together, and we just had to die to the blue because we couldn't get out. I got stuck uh, between two barrels climbing through a window the other day. You got when stuck between two boxes the other day, too. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, so. yeah. 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 The, so, there's we'll problems. And, and Mulligan, we'll I guess. Like. <laughs> yeah. You can't back out of a $2 million match and... Uh, restart so easily yeah either way this is this is a great thing uh i'm excited to see it and we'll yeah. uh, we'll see what happens yeah this is the first true test i think of PUBG as an esport and they they yep. want this bad you can tell that blue hole PUBG corp they want this to be an esport and they they've said they're investing in it and this is the true test now we've got a mostly solid game um much better place than the gamescom invitational like i just said it, it's gonna be it's going to be a site. I'm pretty excited to see this. I'm pretty excited to watch. I think I definitely will tune into this where usually I, I probably would shy away from watching live events. Right. Cool. 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 Good stuff. So moving on, I think we can start right in on our weapon spotlight. So what do we have this week? We're doing the crossbow, the God bow more like. One of the hardest weapons in the game to master. Absolutely. Um, it is some of the most frustrating things because you have to use it in specific times. You can't use it really in close combat unless it's totally ready. Either way, you get one shot, but there are a lot of upsides to this gun. It is like an immediate death or knockout um, from any helmet. Yep. It, it one is. shot's a level three. Yep. Bet you didn't um, know that. It is incredibly hard to use, however. It is completely silent. It's all over the place. You're going to find it in every single game, but it's so hard to use that people never want to pick it up. Yep. Yep. Ammo even comes with a lot. Like, it comes in packs of five. You can find them lying everywhere. Um, but because it takes three and a half seconds to reload, um, it's really tough to be able to shoot track shots if you miss or mm -hmm. um, readjust your position to get a better shot and things like that. Yeah, if you miss that first one, you're pretty much screwed. Yeah, run away. Yep. So it does take a few attachments. It takes the quiver, which if you find a crossbow and a quiver in the same game, that's pretty impressive, uh, especially before you find a gun better than the crossbow because mm -hmm. you're probably going to drop the crossbow as soon as possible. But if you do feel like running with this, you put a quiver on it and it reduces the reload time by 30%. And that's pretty sizable considering it takes three and a half seconds to reload. Yeah. It can take up to a 4X. I believe it may even be an 8X. I couldn't find data on this and I've never had an 8X and a crossbow at the same time. But it can definitely take up to a 4X, but don't do it because... It has a built-in sight with rangefinder markings on it for 50, 100, and 200 meter targets. And there's and a very specific you, way to use these. It is hard to learn. It is very hard. It is very hard. But also, like, in most situations, you're going to be using this early game and from close range. I would love to see a shot kill from a crossbow at 200 meters. That's a long oh way my away. God. And the from the fact that the bullet speed is 160 
compared to 880 for the M4. Like, it's a very slow-moving arrow, so people can just literally start walking as soon as you fire, and it'll miss them because you've already shot behind them. So yeah, stick with a regular scope. Use those rangefinder markings if you can. Uh, <laughs> if, you, if you can, it's pretty impressive if you can pull it off. Uh, but otherwise, drop this thing immediately. Honestly, like... I, it's almost like a, a joke, this gun. Would you ever use it? No. <laughs> Just no. No. <laughs> yeah. There's so many better options. Yeah. It, this thing if is only somebody... for the... The campers. If you are somebody who is just so disgustingly good at this game, by all means, use or it. someone who loves punishing themselves, I don't even want to practice try. Like I don't ever. I walk over it. I'd yeah. Step on it if I could. Walk right over it every single time for me too. The only benefit, the only benefit, is the very, very early game when it's the only gun you find, and no one has a vest because it is a one-hit kill to. Uh, an enemy who doesn't have a vest on so there's a plus and plus another plus 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 it will kill everyone in a one hit shot to a head of with all helmets so th those are the real pros but there's no everything else is a con like th there's nothing nothing great about this weapon yeah completely silent that helps but like i just i don't see a situation where i'd ever pick this thing up and use it over a different weapon every other nope. weapon is better so fun facts about this um the arrows say bro fist on them i don't really know what that's a reference to but they say bro fist in uh green lettering and also if you get shot with a crossbow which we have seen many times the arrows will stick in you for pretty much like 10 minutes of the game yep. time uh, you'll see an arrow sticking out of you, and sometimes if you get hit perfectly right in the face, the arrow will block your vision. So that's that's something that needs to fix. But because that doesn't happen so much, because people never pick this gun up, it's not really not big. Of a, it's really not that big of a deal. Yeah. Yeah. So that is the very sad weapon spotlight about the crossbow, the neglected, terrible weapon. What can the they do to make this thing better? What do you do? You think they should revive this with this weapon patch and try to buff it a little bit? Different, uh, different uh, sight and rangefinder, and a slightly faster reload speed. Yeah, yeah, or somehow make it like a dart gun, so you could put like a magazine in it, and just yeah. pull it back instead of having to fit an arrow to it every time. Yep. Yeah. Or yeah, because it already has the damage. It already has reasonable damage for for what it is. It's already silent. Yeah, there's really nothing else you can really do to it. Explosive tipped arrows. Oh man, how arrows. cool would that be? It's like launching Molotov cocktails with every shot. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's sad, and I wish I could say more about it, but literally that's all, guys. <laughs> Good luck. Get out there, get Here a crossbow kill. Post a picture of a crossbow kill in our Discord, and I will, I will give you a, a prize. I haven't figured out what it is yet, but I'll, I'll give you a prize. A good one, though. It's, it's got to be a good one. Oh yeah, a good kill for a terrible prize, but you'll get something. Yes, good. So question of the week is our next segment. Cody, what was it? So last week we wanted you guys to know, uh, let us know uh, whether or not you liked first person or third person better, and we got a shit ton of feedback. Just, yeah, a poop load. So much feedback, and so much good feedback. A lot of good points, and a lot of people, again, were undecided, uh, not undecided, but uh, had differing opinions on what they prefer. So kicking it off with someone who jumped right in there, Papa JV33, he plays on the Xbox. He says he's an FPS player at heart. So his top games of all times are entirely FPS. And when he started playing PUBG, he didn't realize that there was an FPS option for the first couple of days. So he really wanted to get into the, the first person. But he wasn't able to play many games before going back to third person since then. He says the movement is just very floaty. And it's, he feels like a dog trying to stand up in the bed of a moving pickup truck. That's a pretty good m metaphor. I like that. So his character never stops when he thinks that it will. So he floats back and forth, left and right, past where he wants to go and where he wants to aim. So he has a lot of trouble uh, using controlling the character with the first-person point of view. And hopefully, 
they've said this for PC, that they're going to redo a lot of the animations and movement. And hopefully we'll see this very soon because I would agree with that. I had a lot of trouble even just using the Xbox controller because I'm not very good. Being able to control my character with with accuracy was difficult because of the extra mechanics. Like you stop with your character, but your character does an extra step because that's realistic that they would, you know, plant their feet after you stop moving. I think that's what he's talking about here. That's interesting. Because so if you think about like the PC, Draven says that first person is best on PC because it cuts down on the amount of hackers within the game, which I don't know if that's actually true or not. But maybe uh, the perception of that is like we have a lot less people uh, playing in first person because the game did come out in third and they didn't introduce first for a long time. Um, And even so, like we just started playing first person. I know a lot of that had to do with me, but um, it does seem like less people actually play first person um when they transition over from xbox or jump into the game for the first time i would agree yeah it seems like third person is the the more popular game mode yeah first person's really grown on me though i'm glad to hear you say that yeah because you had a lot of problems with motion sickness and yeah did you have that as soon as you started PUBG, or was that mostly in other games uh so when i was younger and i would play the call of duty games like call of duty like uh um or medal of honor Mm mm-hmm like back when they still made oh, yeah. Metal of Honor games. Um, I played those all the time and I had no issue. It wasn't until, oh boy, I don't even know. Uh, a few years ago, I tried to play Call of Duty Ghosts and I, that was when it was really bad. Um, do you think it was because you were really close to the TV? Do you think that has something no, to do with it? No, because I even tried to move away from the TV, have the lights on, um, and it kind of just got worse and worse. And then when we did this, I was really nervous and it, it just hasn't happened yet. Nice. Because uh, awesome. we had, uh, when it first came out, we tried a couple of them, remember? And it was bad. Like, yeah. Like, do this. You had to step um, away for a little bit. And now um, I really don't don't seem to have an issue. Nice. Not yet, anyway. I don't know what changed. but And that's only when you're playing first person, right? Like you never really yeah. have a problem with third. Never happens in third person. Weird. I bet it has something to do with the screen shaking kind of. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, lo- I looked it up and it said people have issues with it. Um with first person shooter specifically because your your mind is telling you something different than what your body is mm. receiving. Yeah. I think that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. To Draven's point though about cheaters, um I think that's something that John agrees with him on. Uh we used to play we well we've been playing a really long time and there was a, a stretch where we were seeing a lot of hackers especially in third person and this is just anecdotal evidence for me but i noticed when we switched over to first there were less cheaters and that might be just because there were less people playing first person like there's less of a chance to get a cheater but i feel like anecdotally i agree but i don't have any evidence yeah interestingly enough turbo unicorn um they only have uh, turbo unicorn only uses mobile but they only have third person in mobile right now, but they say that they're going to switch over to first person given that uh, they're not mixing between them because third person peaking against first person would obviously give you an advantage. So if they're going to split those up, they're going to move right to first person. If they're going to keep them all playing together, what's the point really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think they would keep them together. I think it would probably be a dedicated mode like we see now. Mm Mm-hmm. And Mongol says they've always played first-person shooters growing up, so he feels more comfortable with that field of view. Uh, But he says it feels like a very last-minute addition to PUBG, and I agree. This game wasn't really built to be a first-person game. I think it was built as a third-person game first, and that's why it feels funky. Um, The stretchy monkey arms animation when picking up loot in first-person coupled with the very restrictive, albeit realistic, field of view when driving makes it a difficult thing for him to choose. But he says, having said that, I do like knowing that people can't utilize the angles of third person to get a cheap kill, so he's not entirely a third person fanboy, but overall does prefer it. And yeah, that is the main benefit of first person. Like, you don't get those angles. You don't get the option of peeking over a wall to see someone, or vice versa. Yeah. I, uh, as you scroll down, people seem to have the same kind of thing about third person peeking is really one of the only reasons uh, why they would choose first person because they feel more safe. They like the the more level playing field and not getting sniped if, if somebody's peeking around a corner. Um, but also some people had never even played third person before this, so they didn't really give it a shot or don't want to try it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think for me, if this game started off as only first 
I probably would never go to third because I grew up always playing first person and that's what I prefer. But because the movement is so funky and so clunky, um, you know, I kind of, I do prefer third sometimes, but I also equally prefer first. It's, it's, I flip flop. I really do. I got to say, probably if you were to pick one on Miramar, I would like third person on Aaron Geller, like first. Interesting. Why do you think that is? I think with the the verticality, is verticality a word? Sure. uh, of of miramar it's just so much easier to be able to like feel more open and not trapped within a like a valley Mm -hmm. in that in that map if you are in third person going up um and then in aaron gal it's maybe it's because we played so many hours in there i just feel more comfortable knowing where i am and not having the field of view that you would have in third person yeah yeah, I can see what your point is about the verticality stuff because there's so many hills and peaks and, and rises sort of like you crouch on the top of a hill and you can use your third person to look over the top of the hill. I yep. think that's kind of more useful in Miramar and first person in Erangel can help you when you are surrounded by trees and maybe your third person camera is a little bit too high and it's sort of blocking your vision a little bit because of the tree cover. And in first person, you can just look, you know, where your character is and know exactly your body positioning, how you should move, where you should be in cover. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. I never thought of it that way to, to use different perspectives depending on the map. I'd like to say I'm really smart, but I literally just thought of it. So. I think that's a really good point, dude. <laughs> you should give John a run for his money with that. Yeah, suck it, John! <laughs> uh, speaking of John, I think we have to give him a shout out here. He says... This game was kind of built for third person, but that doesn't make it the best mode. He says, uh, as a decent player with a good shot, the most frustrating way to die is someone just happening to see him from around a corner and using that information to get an easy kill. Sometimes this is a positioning advantage, advantage, but sometimes it's dumb luck, so he prefers first person. At least I know when someone's looking at me, I can see them too. And that's pretty much how I feel. That's... That's why John gets his own segment in the show. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Essentially, he points out things and sums them up to the point that you go, that's a great point, John. And now you've ruined our segment and we have to move on. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to his segment. <laughs> <laughs> but first, before we roll into John's segment, we have a new question of the week for you guys. And it kind of works with what we were just talking about. Do you guys prefer Miramar or Erangel and Why? Pop into the Discord, give us your feedback under the question of the week segment, and you might get a shout out next episode. Here's John to make a good point. Great, Daniel. For the love of God, it is a great point. Here's John to make an exceptional point. What the fuck? <laughs> State of the game. That's my topic. State of the game. Uh, so <laughs> I just wanted to come in and talk about the basically state of the, game. the state of the game. Taking a look at what game we have been playing in the past and what we're playing now and what we might have to look forward to in the future. Not really speculating too much on the future, but just based on what we're seeing currently. Um, so a couple of things that I just want to bring up real quick is right now on PC, sorry, Xbox and mobile, uh, we have new map testing, which has been very fun to be a part of. And we have brand new events as well as our consistent updates. So I think these things, it's important to look at these as like extra content that we're getting for the base game that we paid for uh, and take a look at what we did in the past versus now. So before we had one map that we played, Erangel, we played it all the time, survival mode, one mode, right? And it was a ton of fun. And that's where we hit our like peak player count. However, we have more content now than we ever have before. So I don't know. I just think that a lot of people are hard on PUBG for its obvious failings. And those are starting to be righted. Um, and we have a lot more content coming to the game. So I don't know what my point is here. What do you want to touch on as far as the uh, the failures? I'm curious to what you think about that. What are some of the things that the game hasn't done well? And what are the, some of the things that are sort of pushing people away or making them complain about the game? 
Well, I think it was slow to adapt to the large player count. I, th I think that was something that they didn't really expect, and it brought an influx of problems, including uh, cheaters and uh, people, like, abusing the game to, like, get these skins that they said they weren't going to have in the game until the, it was released, right? Mm -hmm. So they were... There was a few things that just happened that coincided with the large player count that I think just ballooned the problems, made them way worse. So the game optimization, uh, the servers, and the cheaters all made for like a very frustrating game to play. And they have done a great job over the past like six months or so optimizing to make it a much better experience for the current players. Yeah, I would yeah absolutely. Agree with that. And and I really didn't give it a second thought until just now. But remember how terrible the cheating thing was, and now it's not at we used anywhere to... near that level. Mm. Yeah, we used to have like a cheater won every three games at least that would just wipe our whole team. It and... was it was crazy for a couple of weeks how bad the cheating was. And not just oh he might be cheating. We we saw speed hackers blatant one shots from across the map crossbows mm -hmm. to the head from like running in the middle of a field like mm -hmm. obvious people uh, abusing the system yeah that was really frustrating we had a couple salty episodes back you know 10 10 episodes ago <laughs> or so and that was probably our low point for our show but also the, the low point for the game i think that was you know reflected in our feelings as we yeah. uh, as we did our show the the transparency in itself has just kind of changed entirely yeah so being able to know what's coming and anticipate things coming out even on a weekly basis now they said every two months they would come out with new content and we've got new events every single week for three weeks now they never right. announced that they never said they were going to do that yep that's the coolest thing yeah and yeah that's probably trying to keep up with Fortnite, but i don't care yeah i but i get my events yeah, and the thing is, like, previously they were just trying to put out fires, and now they're actually producing things. Mm -hmm. So instead of, like, just trying to, like, skeleton crew the ship to survival, they're actually, like, going out and doing new things with these events and the, the new map. So it's putting, like, when when all these fires happened, right, like, with, with the cheating and stuff, we, we lost a bunch of fans to games like Fortnite, you know, something that was more polished and easier to get into. I think a lot of people tried PUBG and we lost a lot of those players. But I think some of this content might, and like the optimizations now, it's not going to bring them all back, but it might bring some and we'll get like our final core player base of the game. Mm -hmm. So how, how sustainable do you think that is with this but, new model? Well, so I think the sustainability... I think it'll work out because of how simple I assume the edits to make these events are. Like, there's not a lot of complexities going into it. Like, changing the circle, changing the um, the number of players, the num like teams, that kind of thing. It doesn't seem that difficult. So, specifically for events, I think they could actually like keep having brand new ones and you know bring back old ones every week for a long time uh and still have you know a little bit of novelty with it as far as like other content i think if they keep releasing skins that people want to work towards like whether it's in the game or in the money or <laughs> like paying for it um then they will be able to make enough money to support the game and support like developing for it so what's your bold prediction about the future of the event mode? Do you think some of the events that we have seen so far will eventually make it into the real full game? Well, that's that's kind of like my hope. I don't know if they've figured out how to really integrate it because it seems like two separate things, right? Like when you go into an event lobby, it feels like a completely different experience. And I don't know if they're working to try and unify the two experiences or to have like different servers or you know open up like a server list like csgo has or something like that and people can kind of you know have your event mode servers that kind of thing 
so I, I'm really confused. I think we're in like a limbo period right here where they're just trying to figure out how to integrate all these different things that they've come up with. But hopefully that'll come soon and that'll give us more flexibility in the game. I'm talking uh, map selection, event selection, um, custom things. It's all stuff that other games can do, and maybe now that they've locked down the cheaters a little bit, they will feel comfortable enough to let people have more access to the servers. Do you think that it'll ruin like the allure of an event mode if um, if they're allowing custom games for everyone eventually? Uh, yes and no. Um, I think that you know what we and what you and Dano talked about last week or two weeks ago with war was how y'all thought it was going to be like a really nice death match or warm up mode. Um, and that means that it would have to be in the game consistently for it to be used like that. Um, and that means that more people will get used to it. It wouldn't be quite as special, but I think it would still be enjoyable to hop in and like, you know, in between survival matches, like maybe you're waiting for a friend who's in a game or something like that, and you can just pop into a war with a couple of buddies and go to town. Um, so, I, yeah, yeah, I think it does kind of spoil it as like a special thing, but I think it will increase the longevity of the game to have like some additional things to to play around with inside this whole platform style game. Yeah, that's what you just said right there, platform. Because they've, they've talked about opening this up for mods, but then they talked about not opening it up to mods, which I think is because they didn't want to have cheaters come into the game any more than they already are. Yeah. But I don't really see these custom event modes as mods per se, so I think what they could do is keep the custom server uh, set up open and allow everyone to do that. Mm -hmm. And then you can go to that server list just like a counter-strike server list and look at all the different rules and all the different game types you can choose from and have those run side by side with the actual mm -hmm. full game mode i think that's that's my bold prediction about what the future of the event mode is but it because it, i feel like they're building up to that right because we have custom games now so why not let people quote unquote mod a little more yeah. uh but just mod the rule sets rather than mod the textures rather than adding new right. game modes just you're limited to the game modes you have but you can have some sliders to adjust timings and weapon loadouts yeah. and stuff like that i think yeah that's Over getting at. overwatch has a similar like functionality you can create like your own game mode where you know you don't earn points or whatever you don't earn skins that kind of thing but you can set it up however you want it so you can be like versus all bots and like do headshots only and just practice your aim as bots are running around and trying to kill you. Um, so there's this has been done before. Like it's a it's a thing that you can do, and it's just whether they have like the server ability to do it. it it's easier on Overwatch because you can create a local server that can easily handle six v six. That's that's the difference. Is six v six? You can do that on your computer, run it, and do peer to peer, and it's fine. PUBG is a little bit different. So they're they're still going to have to control the servers in some way, but hopefully they will have some extra custom servers that we can play around with and not just, you know, big streamers. Yeah, that's a good point. The average Joe doesn't have a server box that can hold 100 people, like yeah. just right next to them that they can set up on the fly. It's going to probably <clears throat> still be something they have to rent servers for or um, have dedicated servers on Bluehole's side. To support yeah. but yeah that's the dream i guess yeah but all of this like i still think survival is the number one game mode i'm just ha hoping there's a little extra sugar and i think we've been getting hints at what is to come with all of the stuff that we've had in the past few months i think we're at a really good time for PUBG. I think it's been super fun to play. We've definitely felt more jazzed about playing lately than we have before. We play for a little bit on Thursday nights, and then the new event mode pops, and we're like, oh, let's get everybody together. And it's yeah, been that's the best part about it. Fun. Yeah. And like, 
when they announce 10 person or eight person squads, you go, Oh shit. Who wants to play? Let's do right. this. Cause we've already got four. Yeah. The only thing that I think sucks about those is they need to figure out chaotic chats and, and things of that nature to slow the progress of the event modes because it's great to play with eight or 10 people, but also the war mode wasn't as much of an issue because you could all just do whatever you wanted. Mm. Uh, the eight man squads was a little bit tougher in terms of chat. Mm. Um, because if you're not playing with people you don't know, it's hard to communicate and everybody's just lone wolfing it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. But no, it, the way they're working now, they're going to work out those kinks and they're going to figure out better ways to do those things. Yeah. And people will be more used to like jumping in an eight man, like maybe cutting the chatter as much, not necessarily calling out every piece of equipment, but asking for something specific that you need. Or meeting up at a specific area to dole out equipment. Yeah, yeah, like it, it's a different play style, just like playing duos is different than squads, right? Like there are some places you can drop in squads that you can't drop, uh, or places that you can drop duo, but you can't drop squads because there's just not enough ammo or weapons to go around or whatever. The same thing for eight man, like I think I think the kind of meta of it will will be fleshed out a little bit, uh, a little bit more if they continue to have eight man events, which I enjoyed. I, I think it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun, especially that one that we won um, immediately. That was so much yeah. fun. Yeah, right off the bat. Yeah. yeah, that eight man I think is key to our community. I think because we always have four, or five, or six people that are ready to play, but we can only hold four, and then you're stuck with a solo or a duo. But everyone wants to play together. So if you open up eight man as a full time option, I f yeah. feel like why not? Like why can't they just do that? You have twos, <laughs> threes, fours, eights. Like why not? Yeah. Um, the other, uh, other cool thing I heard someone say once was split up your group of eight into two teams of four in discord. So you don't all talk mm -hmm. over each other. Yeah. It kind of makes it hard to switch on the fly as people die, but I think yeah. that might be an interesting thing to try out once have two fire teams, for example, yeah. and just go in, uh, in a group and like work together, but only communicate to three instead of to seven other people. And then you ha you can have one of each of the four people be like the fire team captains and they can communicate with the in-game chat. And that way you can communicate between squads. That'd be so cool. And then if you like, as people die, you can have somebody who's like a mod or an administrator or whatever, drag people over. Cause you don't have to move yourself in discord. Like you can move other people if you're a mod. Mm -hmm. Right. So you oh, can consolidate sick. on the fly. I think that would be super sick. That's a great, great plan. Let's do it next so, time. Overall, there are a ton of it, this opens up a ton of new avenues for this game in general, mm -hmm. right? We've got custom games coming, event modes still showing up weekly now. It, I think overall, it just kind of helps us adapt the game and not get bored with different things. And if they mm -hmm. fix that mid game, the sky is mm -hmm. sort of the limit now. Yeah, they're working on updates. They're, they've got a weapons update that they talked about. But they haven't nailed down yet, but that might change the gameplay entirely. That'll be pretty fun to play around with. Um, they've got, obviously, the new map, which they're going to be testing for a little bit longer. It's, it's, it's going to be it's going to be an interesting few months for PUBG. So definitely keep coming back, keep playing PUBG. It's, it's not time to switch over to Fortnite yet. Uh, get your friends back into PUBG. Uh, I think it'll be super fun. So, in closing, this has been me, John, making a great point. So, uh, again, thanks to John for making so many great points. Um, this has been episode 36. We are so happy to keep getting uh, to the next episode every single week, even though uh, work schedules are hellish and we just want to put this stuff out there for you guys. So thank you for listening. Thank you for dropping in the Discord. Thank you for emailing us and tweeting at us. You guys are fantastic. Until then, Daniel. We'll see you in game. <laughs>